an introduction into polyphenol oxidase. So today we're going to be looking at an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase, which is a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? So we're going to call it PPO for short. So why did I pick an enzyme with such a long name? Well, it's an enzyme that a lot of you have probably seen in action in the kitchen or actually in your lunchbox, but you maybe didn't know that this was due to the action of an enzyme. So PPO is responsible for what we call oxidative or enzymatic browning. Have you ever seen an apple or an avocado, a potato or a lettuce going brown when you've cut it up? I'm sure a lot of you probably have. So PPO is responsible for just that. Polyphenol oxidase catalyzes the reaction between a phenol and oxygen molecules, which produces a product called quinones, which then produces a product called melanins. And melanins are brown pigments. They're the pigments that color your hair and your skin, and you might have heard of them before. But you might wonder, why do your apples not go brown in the fruit bowl? For example, if we look at our apples here in the fruit bowl, they don't look very brown. And if I take one of these apples, just like this, I'm going to cut it open for you, just like this. And if we look here, our apple is not brown inside. Why does your apple not go brown in the fruit bowl? Well, that's because the enzyme polyphenol oxidase is stored within the cells of the plant in what we call the vacuole, which you can see by the diagram coming up on the screen. And when the fruit or veg becomes damaged, for example, when it falls off a tree, so if it falls off a tree or if you cut it open, for example, or it gets eaten by an insect, then the cell can become exposed to oxygen. So this part of the apple is now going to be exposed to oxygen compared to, if we look at this apple here, we don't have any part of the apple exposed to oxygen apart from the skin outside. And so over time, this half of the apple will be browning because it's now exposed to oxygen, which means the polyphenols can react with the polyphenol oxidase producing those brown colours. If we look at this lettuce here, this lettuce has been open for a couple of days in my fridge and can you see some browning occurring there? And that's because the lettuce has been exposed to the oxygen and you might have seen this happening in avocados, apples or potatoes or lettuce when you've cut them up. So here our enzyme is PPO and this PPO contains some copper ions which is the substance used to make your 1 and 2p coins as part of its structure and your substrates here are phenols and oxygen and your products are both melanins and quinones. So before we go any further in me talking about phenols you might be wondering what a phenolic compound is. Well phenolic compounds or polyphenols are small molecules found in plant tissues such as in this apple here. They're not directly nutrients, but they do provide health benefits to you. For example, in um, the form of anthocyanins, tannins, and carotenoids. And you're probably like, what on earth are they? Well, carotenoids are found in your carrots in the form of carotene that give them the orange color. Tannins are found in your tea, and anthocyanins give blueberries their blue color. So time for you to do your experiment, which is determining the effect of pH or acidity on the browning of fruits and vegetables, for example, apples or potatoes. So for this experiment, you can refer to the PDF file, which explains exactly what you'll need for this experiment. But in short, these are the things I've got for my experiment. So you're going to need an apple and you're going to need some glasses to put your apple in or your potato or your banana or your lettuce, depending what you have in the house. You're going to need some vinegar, like this one, some milk, some lemon juice, some bicarbonate of soda, and some fruit juice, of which I've got an orange and I'm going to juice. And then you need a chopping board and a knife, and some paper and pens to make yourself some little labels for your experiment. So before we go, we've got one more thing to be doing, and that's thinking about our independent, our dependent variables and our hypothesis. So first of all, your hypothesis. So what do you think is going to happen and what do you think you're going to observe during the experiment? Secondly, I want you to think about your independent and your dependent variables. So remember, the independent variable is what we're going to be changing. And the dependent variable is the changes we are measuring. So have a think about what you think both of those are. And the last thing is to think about what you need to control in your experiment. So what are going to be your controlled variables to ensure that your experiment is a fair test. 
Okay, so I hope you've got them written down. So we're going to be discussing your hypothesis after the experiment, but for now let's discuss your variables. So first things first, what was your independent variable? What are we going to change? So shout out whoever you're with. So if you put the acidity or the pH of the solutions or the changing solutions, then you are right. Each apple or whatever fruit or vegetable you're using is going to be in a different solution that varies in pH. So secondly, what was your dependent variable? What are we measuring? Shout it out once again. So if you said the browning or the extent of browning, then you are absolutely right. We're going to be measuring how much something browns or if any browning happens at all. And lastly, we're going to be controlling a few things during the experiment. There's a lot of things that came to mind for me. You might have even thought of some more. So the ones that came to mind for me were the sizes of the fruit and vegetables, so making sure that each piece is the same size, uh, the amount of liquid I put into each bowl or glass, so making sure that I measure just how much goes into each one, the temperature, making sure they're all in the same place, and the same with the oxygen, making sure that some of them are not covered and all of them are exposed to the same amount of oxygen. So these are just some of the things that I thought of, you may have thought of some more, um, but it's really important that we control those factors within our um, experiment to make sure that we're running a fair test. And that way we can make sure that our results are reliable and we can draw a really good conclusion from them.